Sometimes, surely. But please call me Cordelia. I think that Cordelia is a much better name for me, don't you think? I'm truly honored and excited to be going to Green Gables with you, Mr. Cuthbert. I feel like I'm the most fortunate girl in the whole universe, or at least in the whole Dominion of Canada. Hello, my name is Anne Shirley. There she is at the end of the platform. But, but it, it's a boy I wanted. Mrs. Spencer wished to bring a boy over from Nova Scotia here to Bright River, and was to take him home to Avonlea. Well, Mrs. Spencer got off the train with that girl. I'm not there much hard to tell you guys. Th there must be some mistake. Maybe you should ask her. She sure is a talk of that one. Not that you'll excuse me, Matthew. That's the last train today, and I need to get home with myself. Oh, I do hope you're Mr. Matthew Cuthbert. Well, no, I, I reckon that's me. Hello, my name's Anne Shirley, but please call me Cordelia. Yeah, 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 yeah I, I heard you saying all that a little earlier. You're, you're talking kind of loud. <laughs> yes. We tend to do that where I come from. I was beginning to be afraid you weren't coming for me. If you hadn't, I was going to climb that big cherry tree down the tracks and spend the night in it. You're not a boy. But I can climb all the same, and I wouldn't be the least bit afraid. I'd pretend the blossoms and the moonlight were columns in a castle. Well, now, I, I suppose I can't just leave you here. I'll take you home and see what Marilla says. The horse and buggy are over there. I've got your back. Oh! I can manage it. All my worldly goods are in it, but it isn't heavy. Now, oh, isn't that beautiful? What? That tree over there. What does it make you think of? Well, no. I don't know. A bride, of course, <laughs> with a misty veil. I don't ever expect to be a bride myself. I'm so homely. No one would ever want to marry me. Except maybe a foreign missionary. <laughs> Not only that. I'm also thin. Sometimes I like to imagine a nice and plump with dimples in my elbows. Am I talking too much? People are always telling me I do. Would you rather I didn't talk? Uh, well, no, I don't mind talking to folks so much as I'm kind of quiet myself. Or as much as you like. Oh, thank you. I can already tell we're kindred spirits, Mr. Cuthbert. <sighs> Miss Spencer told me all about Green Gables. She said there's a brook nearby. That makes me almost perfectly happy. But I can never be perfectly happy because of this! <laughs> Your hair. What color would you call it? Red, ain't it? Yes, red. I can imagine away my freckles and green eyes and skinniness, but not my red hair. Have you ever imagined what it would be like to be divinely beautiful, Mr. Cuthbert? Well, no. No, I haven't. <laughs> Will your sister like me, even though I'm not divinely beautiful? I doubt that would bother her much. But somebody else might. <laughs> I'd bother her a whole lot. <laughs> We'd better get home. Home? What a lovely sound. Almost angelic. I don't know that I'll ever get used to it. Uh, let's hope you get the chance. Come along now. Oh, yes. Let's not delay. Mrs. Spencer told me all about Green Gables, and it seems like a dream. I picture myself black and blue from the yellows up, hoping it wasn't a dream. You see, Mr. Cuthbert, all my life. Marilla? Well, we've been thinking about it for quite some time. 
Matthew's getting up in years, and I'm afraid his heart troubles him quite a bit. So we sent for the orphan boy. Old enough to do some chores right now, but young enough to be trained up proper. Well, I'll tell you plain and simple that I think you're doing a mighty foolish thing. Bringing a strange child into your home, not knowing a single thing about him. Why, just last week, I read in the paper about a man and his wife who took a boy out of the orphanage, and he set fire to the house on purpose. And there was another case where the adopted boy sucked all the eggs he gathered. <laughs> but that's not the worst one. They say, when we're in New Brunswick, <laughs> an orphan poured poison down the well and the whole family died in fearful agony. Only it was a girl in that instance. Oh, well, we're not getting a girl. Matthew's afraid of them, and I never dream of bringing one up. Well, I can't wait to tell. Let's see how this all turns out. But look, there's Matthew and the boy pulling up now. It's hard to see him in this light, but looks like the first thing you're going to have to do is give him a good haircut. I'll just slip out the side door so you and Matthew can be alone with a new boy. And I won't breathe a word about this. I'll let you two break the news. Oh, and Marilla, one more thing. If I were you, I'd keep the lid fastened real tight over the well.
Miss Cuthbert. I love the view from the window upstairs. In the moonlight, the trees and flowers are barely shimmering. They seem to be calling. Anne, Anne, come out to us! We need a playmate! <laughs> oh, but I don't dare go out, of course. There's no use in loving things if you have to be torn from them now, is there? Can you do chores? Yes, yes, I can. I can sweep and clean and wash dishes oh, and make them. Oh, I meant outside chores. Oh, never mind. That Matthew Fuzzy got me thinking. He's a ridiculous man. I think he's lovely. He didn't mind how much I talked, and he seemed to like it. The moment I saw him, I felt we were both kindred spirits. Well, you're both kind of strange, if that's what you mean by kindred spirits. <gasps> oh, why? Hello, Mrs. Blewett. Miss Cuthbert, I just ran into Mrs. Lynde at the foot of the hill, and she told me that you and your brother had adopted a little boy. Now, Mr. Blue and I were thinking of getting us a young girl at that orphanage. Do you think they might have a hard-working girl with clear eyes and a strong back? Well, this is quite a coincidence. Perhaps a providential coincidence. You see, come here, child. We ordered an orphan boy from the asylum, but instead they gave us a girl. Not very stout looking. But well, why are you? That'll do, I guess. If I take you, you'll have to be mighty good and smart and respectful. I'll expect you to earn your keep. Make no mistake about that. I got a large family at home. They quarrel a lot and the baby's awful fractions. You can take care of the whole lot for me. Yes, I will take her off your hands, Miss Cuthbert. If you like, I can take her home right now. Oh, well, that might be a very good thing for Matthew and I to think about. You see, we haven't completely decided that we didn't want to keep her just yet. We'll let you do it tomorrow. Well, I suppose that'll have to do. Good night. Oh, Miss Cuthbert, did you really say that perhaps you'll let me stay at Green Gables? Just perhaps and no more. Although Mrs. Boobit certainly needs you more than I do. I'd rather go back to the orphanage than the park. Oh, please let me stay, Miss Cuthbert. I'll do whatever you ask of me. Well, you can start by going upstairs and getting dressed for bed. And don't forget to say your prayers. I don't know how. You've never been taught to say prayers. Uh, why, you love God, don't you? Well, he gave me red hair, so I never really cared for him much. Young lady, I can see you need some strong religious training. And we'll start right here. Kneel down here with me. Repeat after me. Now I lay me down to sleep. Now I lay me down to sleep. Oh, why must we kneel when we pray? Wouldn't we be a lot closer to heaven standing up? I'm sorry, I'll just sit down. What comes next? I pray the Lord my soul to... Oh, why, you're old enough to pray for yourself. Just thank God for his blessings and ask him humbly for the things that you want. Okay. <clears throat> Dear Father, I thank thee for the white way of delight and the lake of shining waters, and that's all the blessings I can think of right now. <sighs> As for the things I want, they're so numerous, I'll only mention the two most important. Please, please let me stay at Green Gables. And please let me be good looking when I grow up. I remain yours respectfully and surely. Good night. I've never brought up a child before, especially a girl, and I'm sure I'll make a terrible mess of it. But it's about time that somebody adopted that child and taught her something. As far as I'm concerned, Matthew, she can stay. Well, now. Yes, she can stay and we'll try to make her useful. But don't you go interfering with my methods. I suppose an old maid knows more about bringing up a child than an old bachelor. I thought you were the mayor of the barn. Oh, because I had my mind so much about that little girl I plum forgot. Uh, looks like I've got two children to take care of instead of just one. Come on, you put up the mare and I'll unhitch the wagon.
to your school, no doubt, Mr. Phillips. And he'll certainly be welcome, of course. It's nice to see a teacher taking such a close interest in his students. I, I was just helping Miss Andrews with her geometry. How conscientious. Uh, now, Miss Andrews, let us once again review the difference between an axiom and a postulate. Children! 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 Oh, Children! Children! Oh, come on, get it back! Children! If I had to do it all over again, I'd only have ten instead of twelve. We'll need more chicken feed by next week, Matthew. Better get two sacks instead of just one this time. Miss Cuthbert? Morning, child. Oh, please, will you please tell me if you're going to send me away or not? I can't bear not knowing any longer. I spent the first half of the night awake and worrying, and the second half asleep and dreaming about lovely Green Gables. Well, I suppose I might as well tell you. Matthew and I have decided to keep you. That is, if you're a good girl and prove yourself useful. Yes, <laughs> child, whatever is the matter. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I'm glad as glad can be. I've never been happier. Can you tell me why I'm crying? Maybe because you're all excited to work out. Huh? I'm afraid you laugh and cry far too easily. Yes, we'll keep you. We'll try to do right by you. There's only, you'll have to go to school, of course, but there's only two weeks until summer vacation, so you may start in September. Oh, thank you! Now, what should I call you? Miss Cuthbert? Or Aunt Marilla, maybe? Well, I'm not your aunt, and Miss Cuthbert sounds kind of distant, so you may just call me Just Plain Marilla. Sounds awful disrespectful to call you Just Plain Marilla. Not if you speak it respectfully. And you can call Matthew Just Plain Marilla. <laughs> Thank you. Now that I have a home, do you think I'll ever have a bosom friend in Avonlea? A what kind of friend? A bosom friend. An intimate friend. A really kindred spirit to whom I can confide my innermost secrets. Oh, well, Diana Bear is the nearest little girl. Oh, her house must be the one by the lake of shining waters. Her hair isn't red, is it? I could endure red hair in a bosom friend. It's bad enough to have red hair myself. Oh, no, Diana Bear is a pretty girl with dark hair. She's also good and smart, which is better than pretty. But her mother's a very peculiar woman and won't let her play with just anyone, so you try and make a good impression. Now, while I finish breakfast, you start learning this. What is it? The Lord's Prayer. It's a very good place to start religious training. Learn it by heart. Oh, thank you for keeping me, Mr. Cut. <laughs> Matthew. <sighs> At first I was so happy, I was crying. But now I'm so happy, I'm laughing. Have you ever been so happy that you laughed and cried at the same time? Well, no, I don't recollect that I have. <laughs> Miss, I mean, Marilla gave me this prayer to learn. It's beautiful, like poetry. Listen to this. Our Father, who art in heaven. <laughs> it sounds just like a line of music. I'm so glad I'm learning it. Well, learn it and hold your tongue. Perhaps you'd best go upstairs so as not to be distracted by your kindred spirit. <laughs> Yes, Marilla. Morning, Marilla, Matthew. Where's the little boy? Uh, well, uh, it's a little girl. The orphan asylum made a mistake. Oh, you'll be sending her back, of course. Well, actually, no. Matthew immediately took kind of a fancy to her, and I have to admit, I sort of like her myself. But you know nothing about her, nor her disposition. And you, Marilla, with no experience raising children. There's no telling how a child like that will turn out. But I wouldn't want to discourage you, Marilla. Well, you won't. When I make up my mind, it stays made up. I suppose you'd like to see her. Anne, Anne, come down here for a moment. It's a great responsibility you've taken on yourself. You too, Matthew. Well, now, we'll see. And this is Miss Rachel Lynn, one of our closest friends. She lives on the next farm. Good morning, ma'am. Well, if I didn't pick you for your looks, that's for certain. She's terribly skinny and homely, Marilla. Come here, child. Love the heart. And then you would never see such freckles and hair as red as carrots. Come here, I say. <laughs> I hate you! 
may we please come to order. We have only a few minutes today because of the guest minister who will be speaking at church. Now, if you will open your quarterlies to this Sunday's question page. Hello. You're late. I'm dreadfully sorry. I was waiting for Marilla, but she had a bad headache and couldn't come. So I had to find the way to church myself. Dallying all the while, I see, by picking flowers. Yes, roses and buttercups. Aren't they lovely? Although pinks and yellows aren't becoming to me, I know. Child, come here. In the future, I suggest you pin bouquets on your dress where they belong, like the other girls. What's the difference where they're worn, as long as they're worn? Excuse me? I'm sorry, I'll just step. Now, as I was saying, before we were interrupted, open your quarterlies to this Sunday's question page. But do not look at the answers. Yes, Miss Rogerson. Now, I expect all of you, except for the little orphan girl, of course, <laughs> to know all the answers. Yes, Miss Rogerson. On which day did God create the fish in the fowls? Yes? On the fifth day, God created the fish and the fowls. That is correct. Now, where was Cain sent after he had slain his brother Abel? Yes? Cain was banished to the land of Nod, to the east of the Garden of Eden. That's right. Now, what punishment did God visit upon the evil servant? All right. You again. The evil serpent was made to crawl on his belly and eat dust the rest of his days. And she doesn't even have a quarterly. Child, how long have you been studying the Bible? A week. Marilla's been teaching me. Well, you must be a fast learner. Marilla's a fast teacher. The girls in this class are encouraged to memorize and recite scriptural passages. Do you know any? Only the Lord's Prayer, but I guess I would like to do that one. Oh, I can recite the dog at his master's grave. <laughs> it isn't a truly religious piece, but it's sad and melancholy. It might as well be. I don't think that would be appropriate. Thank you. I understand. <laughs> but I promise, by next week, I'll have lots of scripture to recite. Probably the entire Old Testament. <laughs> Time for church. Oh, and one final item. In two, in two weeks, there will be a Sunday school picnic in Mr. Harmon Andrews Field. And if you promise to know the answers to next Sunday's questions, as well as the little orphan girl who knew them today, I think maybe we can persuade Miss Bell and Miss Lind to make ice cream. Ice cream. But only if you know the answers. Yes, Miss Rogerson. Now, don't dally. Go immediately to your pews in church. I understand that the guest minister is quite punctual. You're going to be late for church. You will at the picnic. It's going to be near the pond where I live. Ah, yes. The Lake of Shining Waters. The Lake of Shining Waters? <laughs> I like to give fancy names to things. You must be Diana Barry. I am. Marilla said you were pretty, but you're actually beautiful. Oh, you are, honestly. My name's Anne Shirley, spelled with an E. I'd much rather be called Cordelia, but Marilla says that would just confuse everyone. I'm pleased to meet you, Anne. Oh, likewise, I'm sure. We live very near each other. I'm at Green Gables. I know. It'll be nice to have someone to play with. No other girls live near me, and my sister Minnie Mae is too little. Then it's settled! What's settled? We can be bosom friends. I suppose so. Will you swear to be my bosom friend forever and ever? It's dreadfully wicked to swear, especially in a church. I'm not my kind of swearing. It just means promising solemnly. That's okay, then. How do we do it? 
We join hands. Now, I'll say the oath first. I solemnly swear to be faithful to my bosom friend, Diana Berry, so long as the sun and moon shall endure. Now, you say that and put my name in. I solemnly swear to be faithful to my bosom friend, Anne Shirley, as long as the sun and moon shall endure. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that you were a strange girl, Anne Shirley, but I think I'm going to like you real well. Oh, oh. Girls, time for church. Stop dallying. Oh, we weren't dallying, Miss Rogerson. We were only swearing. Girls! Hurry up, Anne. Your company will be here soon, and I've got to leave. Coming, Marilla. I've just got to tie my bow and put on my shoes. Oh, you've been ready in plenty of time if you haven't spent half the morning talking to Matthew, and him taking in every word like a perfect ninny. But I had to tell Matthew all about the Sunday school picnic yesterday. Hmm. Do I look okay? As well as you should. Thank you for allowing me to wear my Sunday dress, Marilla. Against my better judgment. But you have to wear your best dress when you entertain your best friend. Oh, it's all perfectly elegant, Marilla. Cookies? Fruit preserves? I can't leave the tea when Diana gets here! I think there's some raspberry cordial left over from the church social. You can have that too. It should be on the second shelf of the cupboard. The raspberry cordial. My dear Marilla! Oh, coming, Rachel! Now, when you're cooking, be sure to keep your wits about you. And when you do the dishes, don't get soap suds all over the floor like you did last time. Now, Matthew and the hired hand will be back from the lesson pretty soon. After Diana leaves, you get them their supper. Now, you and Diana have a good visit. Oh, thank you for letting me have her over, Marilla. You're so very kind to me. Oh, there, none of your hugging nonsense. You'll please me most if you do what you're told. Time to go, Marilla! Hold your horses, Rachel. I'm coming. After, after... Matthew and, the, after Matthew and the hired hand leave, and you can get going on your patchwork. Maybe you can even finish it tonight. I hate patchwork. There's no imagination in it. I wish time went as fast when I'm doing patchwork as it does when I'm playing with Diana. Is everything ready? Seems to be. Cook, but 
it's all uphill. Like when I forget to put the flour in the bread or the sugar in the shortcake. But last week was the worst. Mm -hmm. They had a plum pudding with the sauce and some was left over. So Marilla told me to put it in the pantry and cover it. <laughs> well, I forgot all about covering it. Diana almost drowned in it! <laughs>
dead gone on Gilbert Blythe, Bessie Wright. And I'm not the only one. Who is it? Thank you. 
march out in an orderly fashion. Do not rush. I'm awful sorry I made fun of your hair, Anne. Don't be mad at me for keeps. Here's a candy heart for you. I brought it all the way back from your Brunswick. I'll never forgive you, Gilbert Blythe! Never! Oh. oh, Diana, you mustn't speak. You must obey your mother's orders. Oh, I've been humiliated beyond belief. And look at this! Mr. Phillips, let me help my name! That settles it. I'm never coming back to school. No one, not even Marilla, can make me. Oh, Diana, we'll never see each other again. But in years to come, my memory will shine like a star over my lonely life. I read that somewhere. <laughs> Wilt thou give me a lock of thy jet black tresses, imparting to treasure forevermore? Now, you must go lest we be seen together. Henceforth, we must be as strangers, though my heart will be ever faithful to thee. Fare thee well, my beloved friend. Downstairs, and she's just upstairs attending uh, to Anne. Is the little thing sick? If she is, it's probably over that business about quitting school. But I'm glad you took my advice and didn't make her go back. Anyway, she's not missing much. That Mr. Phillips is a terrible teacher. If his uncle wasn't a trustee, he wouldn't have a job. I just hope he leaves next year when Priscilla Andrews goes to Queens. If she passes the entrance examinations. Do you think Anne will ever want to go back to school? Of course she will. And the less fuss made about it, the quicker she'll go. Well, when she does go, I'd like her to have a really pretty dress to wear, like the other girls. Matthew Cuthbert? For once, I agree with you. The way Marilla dresses that child is positively ridiculous. Maybe, uh, maybe you can pick out a dress for her over at Blair's and Carmody. I'll give it to her as a Christmas present. That way Marilla will have to let her wear it. I got something real pretty. If I don't find what I like, I'll make it myself. Yeah, yeah, them, them, them floppy things. Or uh, on the sleeves. Like, like the other girls wear. Puffs? Yes. Of course. That'll be the latest fashion. Sorry to hold you up, Rachel. Anne, Mrs. Lynn's here. Come down and say goodbye to us. We'll be gone in a couple of days. You ought to come with us, Matthew. Half the town's going. It might be your only chance to see the premiere of Canada in person. Oh, well, Matthew's not big on political rallies. Perhaps he's afraid I'll embarrass everybody when I ask the premiere why he won't give women the vote. Goodbye, Mrs. Lynch. Marilla, have a nice trip to Charlottetown. Whoa, heart, child. Why are you wearing that old granny cap? She doesn't have head legs, does she? Oh, no, she's all right. Yeah, it's a relief. Come here, child, and let me see if your hair is turning auburn yet. No, it's it's still red. Oh, we we'd best get going, Rachel. We've kept your husband waiting long enough. And Matthew, you take care of each other while we're gone, and we'll see you tomorrow night. Marilla, is that a lock of loose hair on your coat? Love oh, hard. It looks green. Oh well, it had to be, Rachel. There's no such thing as green hair. Fair point. Well, I suppose we better be coming. You don't really like. <sighs> Oh, there now, and it's going to be all right. She'll spread it all over Avonlea. She saw the green hair. But but she doesn't know where it came from. That peddler told me the dye would turn my hair black. I shouldn't have trusted it. He lied to me. But he sure told the truth when he said it wouldn't wash out. <laughs> but Marilla did the right thing by cutting it off. Right down to the roots. It'll go back. Better than ever, I'll bet. Mr. Cuthbert? That's right. I'm Miss Susan Stacy. Why don't you sit down? Oh, no, thank you. I'm in a rather hurry since I'm calling out several families today. Although a number of 
the deuce and you be on the way to Charlottetown. You must be Anne. Yes, Miss Stacy. I've heard a lot about you. Good things, I might add. I'll come straight to my business. It is possible that the teaching position on Abilene may become available next year. Mr. Phillips is leaving? It's not definite, but I have been encouraged to apply. I am from Montague, I'm a Queens graduate. I was second runner-up for Queens Medal, and I might have gotten an Avery scholarship had Queens been giving one year I graduated. I don't say this to boast, but merely to state my qualifications. Well, sound qualified to me. Why don't you start right now? Thank you for your votes of confidence. I like Avonlea, and I'd like to teach here. But I want to teach students who have goals and ambitions beyond Avonlea. With the brightest and best students who wish to continue on at Queens, or a similar institution, would the parents or guardians be willing to pay for their child's education at such a place? I don't ex expect an answer from you now, but I certainly want you to think about it. If the opportunity arises, I'll call on you again. Miss Stacy, I don't even go to school, but I might if you were the teacher. That wouldn't be until next year. You'll miss a lot if you stay out till then. I have my reasons for not going. I'm sure you do. But do those reasons outweigh your desire for knowledge and the dreams that knowledge can bring? I'm sorry. I've overstepped my bounds. I enjoyed our brief visit. Good day, Anne, Mr. Cuthbert. Send you to a place like Queens, even if I had to hold up a bag to do it. Oh, Matthew. But I suppose uh, we could scrape enough together without resorting to robbery. Of course, if you wanted to get back to uh, get to Queens, you'd have to be getting back to school pretty soon. That man humiliated me. Everyone laughed at me. I'd be mighty proud if you passed them entrance examinations. But you'd be even prouder if I got the gold medal or even the Avery scholarship. Well, now I I'd be mighty pleased, of course. But the main thing is just try your best, even when you don't feel like it. That'd make me the proudest. I haven't looked at this book in a month. <laughs> I hate geometry. I hate Mr. Phillips. I hate school, and I'm never going back. Anyway, if I did go back, everyone would know I got all my hair cut off. Diana, did your mother say we could play together again? Mother and father went to Charlottetown yesterday. They're staying with my Aunt Josephine until tomorrow. And well, Diana, I'm overjoyed to see you, but you mustn't disobey your mother while she's gone. It's Minnie May. She's awful sick. Mary Jo is staying with us, and she says Minnie May has pneumonia in the group. But she doesn't know what to do, and I don't either. Uh, I've never taken care of a young one before. I have. At the orphanage, we had to take care of each other lots of times. I once helped this pair of twins through a terrible sick spell. All right, and you go with Diana. I'll fetch the doctor now and Lake. I think he went to Charlottetown like everybody else. Matthew will find someone. I'll take this bottle of Epicac in case you don't have me at home. All right, Anne. Minnie Mae's causing something terrible, and I think she may be dying. She won't die. We won't let her. Just come on. Jerry, are you out there? I just finished showing the corn, Mr. Cuthbert. <laughs> Hitch up the sorrel. I have to go get doctor for the little berry girl. I may have to go all the way to Carmody. I'll get right on it. Oh, well, I can't find a doctor, and we'll just have to tend to things herself. I hope that little girl's gonna be okay. The Watsons lost their youngest to pneumonia about this time a year ago. Sad, sad thing. Jerry, if I'm not back in time, you may have to stay late and do the milking. Don't forget to lock up the hen house when you leave. She'll do better in the living room where it's warmer. The bedroom is much too cold. Diana, go get a spoon for the epic pack. Mary Jo, we're going to need lots of hot water. Go put plenty of wood on the kitchen stove. Yes, right away. I'll do the best that I can. Oh, sweetheart, please wake up. <coughs> Come on, Minnie Mae. There you are. <coughs> go get some soft flannel claws. Do you know where they are? Yes. No. Oh, I don't know. Check bottom drawers. Mother's key thing is like that in bottom drawers. <coughs> <coughs> don't cry, Diana. I've seen lots worse than this. Just go get some cloths. Sicker than anyone I've ever seen. Fever a mile high. Take this. Come on, Minnie Mae. You've got to take every bit of this medicine. <coughs> Minnie Mae, wake up. Wake up. We've got to get that phlegm out of you. This will make you cough it up. <coughs> Minnie Mae. <coughs> you poor thing. What you're going through is far worse than getting all your hair cut off or studying geometry or losing your best friend. When the night is over, I'm putting aside my petty pride and foolish vanity. 
I'm going back to school. I'm going to study hard so I can pass those Queen's examinations. I'm calling for highest honors so Matthew and Marilla will be proud of me. The time for self pity's over. But first, Minnie Mae, I've got to get you through this awful crisis. Uh, Minnie Mae! Here we go, Anne. Is she going to die? Not if we do all we can and pray. I think there's a Bible verse that says, God is in his heaven and all's right with the world. Just keep saying that over and over. <laughs> Mary Jo, put more wood on the stove. Hurry, hurry! 